Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to take a look in the Soul Forge and tell you what I think about the new weapons and mythics in there, and if you should be crafting them or not. We'll also take a look in the shop, tell you what I think about this new glory troop, Eldritch Disciple. But anyway, I was wondering why my frisbee was getting bigger. Then it hit me. Yeah, that's what happened. Anyway, Eldritch Disciple creates five purple dragon gems boosted by ally and enemy daemons. The traits, ally daemons gain two life, accursed, all enemies lose two random skill points, and demonic pact, 25% chance to summon an ancient horror on death. 13 mana cost using red and purple. Not sure about that spell yet until I use it. My experience with Dragon Gems so far is they don't get you quite as much mana as you might have imagined they did, considering how they work. And obviously with no chance of an extra turn after that, apart from maybe pure fluke, then um, you could actually set up your position. So until I use it, I'm going to give Eldritch Disciple a very average 5 out of 10. But the proof in the pudding is in the eating, as they say. But what's the point of having your pudding if you can't eat it? So we'll try him out later and see what we think. Anyway, same as ever, grab these all the way up to level 20 if you can. It's all the quantity 16. This gets you enough to get to Mythic to get it to level 20, which is going to help your power level kingdoms in the long run. As ever, if you have more glory left over as well, Spores of War, always worth taking up to quantity 10. Gets you more event keys, gold, souls, and joy of joy. More treasure maps. We love treasure maps, they're the best, really. No, they're not. Need something to do with treasure maps. Like, needs like another Soul Forge expansion or something. Something to do with these resources that are just like, just stacked up. We can't do anything with a lot of players. Anyway, let's take a look at the weapons first. We'll start with the Doomed Cauldron. Gives all allies magic plus one life plus two per tempering level. Then give all other allies five mana. And if the enemy has a doom, give them four more. For each purple enemy, give two magic to all allies. So quite situational to make sure you get the most out of all that. There's a lot going on there to make sure you get all the benefits. And I'm not mega keen on these doomed weapons that give, give life. You go into a battle with a doomed weapon that gives life against a doomed weapon that does a lot of damage. Or the same amount of damage. And you're going to come out the loser most times. So... Um, yeah, there may be a place for it. There's obviously some teams that actually give benefits when you've got more life and things like that. So it's not entirely bad. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there are better weapons out there. Infernal Vouge. Deals magic-based damage to an enemy boosted by daemon allies. Then create a mix of six red and purple gems for each daemon ally. So you need damage in your team to make the most out of this. Uses blue and brown. Generates red and purple, so you need your other allies to be daemons and use purple and red to make the most out of this. But if your team fulfills those requirements, then certainly can be a very good mana generator. The only thing with these weapons is, even with a complete team of daemons, these weapons don't loop or get as much mana as you think they would sometimes. They're not. They're a bit hit and miss on the reliability, that's what I'm saying. What's next? Grasping Grimoire. Deal magic-based damage to an enemy boosted by mystic allies. So similar to the last weapon, then create a mix of six yellow and purple this time for each mystic ally. This uses blue and brown. Again, similar to the last team, going to make sure you need mystics in your team that at least a couple of them use yellow and or purple. And then it may be very good indeed. Start of other worlds. Another one really similar to the last two, so a whole set of these in here. Deals magic-based damage to an enemy boosted by Karakoth allies. Then create a mix of six purple and brown gems for each Karakoth ally. Using red and yellow, make sure your Karakoth allies, at least a couple of them, use purple and brown. Otherwise, you are generating that mana for nothing. Tome of Karakoth. This is kind of like the anti-Karakoth weapon, as I call them. Remove all purple gems. No effect, there's just gone from the board, like uh, a Karakov team would likely prefer to use purple as a, it's the magic colour. So most troops from Karakov are going to want purple. When you take that away, you're restricting their chances of collecting mana. And then deal damage to an enemy boosted by the gems removed. And if the battle is 
battle is from Karakov, or if the enemy is from Karakov, or if the battle is in Karakov, deal double damage. That's we got. Is that it? That is the a lot. All these other ones are in previous Soul Forge videos, so no need to repeat. Let's take a look at the troops, starting with the Mythics. Arc Proxy Evendra. Very, very damaging troop, but only if you manage to get the Convert All Yellow Gems to Uber Doom Skulls. Not only do Uber Doom Skulls do a lot of damage, but they also generate a lot of mana back, because their explosion can cause a chain reaction which basically can cause a board wipe a lot of the time. Really, really powerful, really damaging, can cause like an instant death to opponents absolutely straight away. And also Curse, Web and Poison, the strongest enemy. Another good point about her is her traits. Actually, the first one's very good. Immune to Mana Drain, Silence, Fairy Fire and Web. So apart from being cursed, she pretty much gets her mana and keeps it. Reduced damage from spells by 25% is good, and Conjure an Uber Doomstorm when an enemy dies helps her spell if she's close to casting again. And the cool thing about her is, even though the mana cost is quite high, because of the way her spell works, if you don't have, have her mana blocked by anybody else if that's you know, possible in your team, then she can get an awful lot of that mana back as soon as she casts and be very close to doing it again. Really powerful. I like her a lot. Mithrillion sort of rubbishy good in a way explodes a 3x3 block and gains magic based armor barrier a random ally for every skull destroyed so the spell's a bit rubbish for a mythic its strength almost in its traits reflect 75 percent of skull damage is really high note that's not reduce skull damage so if you got hit by 40 Skull damage, for example, you're still going to get 40 skull damage, but you are going to ping 30%, of, I mean, 30 skull damage back to the enemy. So that is actually quite good. You still receive the full amount, but you give them back the three quarters of it. Spell block, reduce damage from spells by 50%, also powerful, and gain one armor when an enemy cast a spell is absolutely rubbish. So, yeah, quite tanky in first place, I suppose. Or could actually, you know, just kill the person who's trying to give you skull damage but the spell is a bit lame yeah it's very very lackluster for me one of the worst mythics pan pretty decent deals a lot of damage to three random enemies and knocks them to the back i do like the knock them to the back mechanic a lot of teams are entirely the way they work is very important on the order of the team and if you can mess that up then you can actually go a long way to victory so i do like pan don't actually use it that much, but I think a pan is one of these mythics that works better in pairs, which makes sense because it's a ram, you have a couple of them. Bashing away at other people, you're going to start like making heads roll pretty quickly. Okay, traits. Impervious, very good. Totem with a veil, not bad either. All wild folk allies gain one life and magic when matching four or more gems, but where most games you want them to be quick these days that's a little bit too slow going to make any sort of difference on a higher level but yeah pan is pretty good ah sigarax this is like the trolls but all all of them rolled into one you know like forest troll and things like that that doubles the amount of green on the board and adds three and things like that really really good but this is like all of the trolls right in, rolled into one you double a chosen color on the board then create three more of that of that color then give life to all allies of that color it's absolutely superb you can loop and loop and loop you can make your team super tanky give them a insane amount of life and then um yeah and do it again when you need to extremely extremely good great traits as well impervious immune to all status effects devour the canopy and mana burn and troll blood all elemental allies gain one attack and armor at the start of my turn but it's the middle one impervious which is really good for this but yeah, Sycorax, absolutely superb. Now yeah, what we got? Oh, I cracked open my gem dragon egg I earned earlier and got yet a another duplicate. God damn it. Anyway, that's the way it goes. The dragons are actually quite good in pairs, actually, so I don't mind getting a couple of sets of duplicates, but I think I'm on three of one type now, and I've got two each of two more. So it's like, I've still only got three different dragons, I think, but... Yeah, just multiples of everything. Never mind. Right, ooh, Glaceon is here. 
transform yellow to blue and red to doom skulls and freeze the strongest enemy very popular in guild wars teams reduce damage from skulls by 65 percent is very good makes it quite tanky in first place and there's always a chance that that yellow to blue and particularly the red to doom skulls is going to majorly affect the game and get some lucky hits which just could you know just kill people outright very good troop indeed artema not that great really explode a row deals damage to the two weakest enemies boosted by ally ally centaurs 40 percent chance to dodge skull damage is high and 50 percent chance to ignore armor with skull damage not too bad but um overall you don't see her used that much unlike gorgotha which you do mainly because of that reduced damage from skulls by 75 percent pretty tanky in first place at the top of the team because it explodes a load of gems which is going to generate mana for the team as well as cleanse itself so Golgotha still really viable troop as is a web spinner absolutely superb she's pure evil deals triple a skull damage to poisoned and webbed enemies when you have that awesome third trait deals damage to all enemies and poisons them as well and creates nine green gems but normally you don't get web spinner for the spell you get it for that awesome third trait and start dishing out triple skull damage absolutely superb all right so um who gets my mythic of the week well there's two outstanding mythics here really sycorax particularly and arc proxy evendra super damaging but for pure usability in a multitude of different ways i think i have to give it to sycorax really really good can make the difference between winning and losing many times such a good spell so usable in so many teams and it's elemental as well so easy to get a 50 percent start on this with plenty of teams so um sycorax gets my mythic of the week well there's a video i've got my world event team coming up a little bit later on and a elder dragon team will be later on as well the new mythic we get from the campaign pass so if you enjoyed the video want to see any of them things in the future bash that like and subscribe button and if you're feeling generous why not join it's all good you get all sorts of different stuff with the memberships right there's a video catch you again next time thanks for watching bye for now